We say that these things that still can serve as so much disease. And what shall we say to these things? People are hurting with broken esteem. So many questions, but still, but still one answer. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God is with me, who shall I? I am loved, I am healed What shall we say to these things? So much violence It's getting hard to believe And what shall we say to these things? People are hurting with broken esteem. So many questions, but still one answer. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God is another day where the Lord has blessed us and another day where we get to worship the Lord either when we're on zoom or in the church now before we start our service let's pray dear Lord thank you for another day and everything you have done for us I also like to thank everyone who's here on either zoom or at church and In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's start the service. As you're going through stuff throughout the week to help you along, so that way when you get back to Sunday, you can get that recharged battery and, you know, draw closer and closer to Christ. So the name of the sermon today that I put together is Sanitize Your Spirit and the Power of Prayer. So sanitizing definitely came in thanks to COVID-19. So the first verse I'm actually going to start with is 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. And it reads, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us for all unrighteousness. Now, when you think of sanitizing, the first thing that comes to mind 
is those little bottles of hand sanitizer that I know you've probably have seen a million times. So it says that if you squirt just a little bit in your hand, it kills 99% of germs. Not 100, but 99. Pretty close, if you want to ask me. So one of I told you that there's a way that you could cleanse your spirit or sanitize your spirit 100%. Now, that 1% may not look big to you, but in my eyes, that 1% is that 1% that I need to keep going every day. But the first step that we have to do, like you said in John, is confess with our mouth. The hardest thing for us to do as humans is to admit when we've done wrong. And the reason it's so hard is because we all have pride. We all have something that we want to stand for, something that we want to say, hey, I did it, I'm right, I'm you're wrong, and go back and forth. But see, when it comes to God, it's, it's, it's a lot more complicated than that. Because when you're wrong, not only does he nurture you and give you the spirit to look in the right direction, but even when sometimes when you don't admit it, he brings it to you face to face from somebody you may not even expect to hear it from. So first step to sanitizing your spirit is to first open your mouth and confess and just tell Lord, listen, I need you, I messed up, I'm not perfect, as you know, I'm only flesh. I need your spirit right now, Lord. I need your help in this time. I need your help to get through this. I don't care if it's, it's Shanika at work that keeps stealing your tissues, or uh, it's little Tyrone in the park that keeps pushing you down. Those moments right there is when you step in and you think, okay, as they say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? But as you are going through the sanitizing walk, there's going to be those trials. There's going to be those people that see the light in you and they want to dim that light so that way the light of the enemy can shine brighter. But we all know there's no brighter love than Jesus. So the second step, you have to stay constant in communication with God. Yes, he is almighty, but he would never know unless you say it. So let's piggyback to it and say, like he said, Lord, I need you. And here's a psalm that you can touch on to help you. Psalms 51 to 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now I'm going to read that one more time. And once again, it's Psalms 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So when you're going to talk to Keisha about the tissues, you might want to say this first before you go say something to her. I mean, you want to adjust little Tyrone in the park for bullying you or beating up on you, just listen to it, just read this real quick, and I promise you your aspect or your view, your view is going to change. Now, as you're sitting at home, no matter what age you are, I want you to find your prayer closet. Speak to him and tell him your needs, your worries, and your most precious concerns, and then ask him to clean your spirit and bring you closer to him. We're going to end sanitized with Hebrews 10 and 22. Let us draw near to you, God, with a sincere heart and a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilt conscience and, a, and having our bodies washed with pure water. So let's, we're going to go back on sanitize. So sanitize. First, we're going to open your mouth and you're going to speak. You're going to tell God, God, listen, I've done wrong. I'm not perfect. I need you now. The second step, we're going to apply the math. We already know two plus two equals four. So apply the math. Once you speak it, tell God, ask him, use it. Use that, that, that armor that he gives you and just read a passage every now and then. It may be something you just feel intimidated and you don't really know what to read. Just 
just lay the Bible on the desk and just skim through the pages. I promise you something on there is going to light up because they're seeking his help and he knows it. Now, it's time for the part I've been waiting for, the power of prayer. I'm going to start with Acts 9, verse 40. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Now, if anybody knows anything about Acts, Acts, I call it the book of movements, because the way the, way the miracles that are performed in the book of Acts is amazing. And this one right here puts the icing on the cake. It starts off already strong because prayer was able to bring back life. Now, I know many of us sit there and wonder, like, prayer is that powerful? And it is, because guess what? Through generations of prayers, I stand in front of you right now. Prayers is what keep us through every single day, every time we fight and look through something. See, but let me tell you something about prayer. See, what people really don't understand about prayer is they think, oh, I got to be right here at the pulpit, or I need to be in pastor office to get a good prayer. Uh, if my grandma don't put me, don't put the oil on my head, my prayer ain't going through. And that's not how prayer works. Prayer can be done anytime, any place, with or by anyone. Prayer can be done anytime, any place, with or by whomever. What that means is, as I'm driving in traffic and I see this car about to cut me off, and I just say something real quick, like, Lord, just follow me with me. Did you know you just prayed? It's that easy and it's that simple. And the power of the tongue, once again, is once you say something and God knows his heart and your heart and it's pure and it's something that you want and, and you've been begging and pleading and doing the right ways by him, he's going to give you the answers. Now, I may not come when you expect it. Now, the only thing that comes on time is the first and rent. That's the only two things that come on time. Other than that, Jesus is gonna work on Jesus and God's gonna work on their time, but they also have their will in mind. See, I may be sitting here thinking, oh yeah, I want to get that new Lamborghini. But see, God may be saying, you really need to get this minivan. You see what I'm saying? He he has ways of working because I may get that minivan and now I got four boys and all of them load up in the back and I can turn the DVD player on and ride in peace. But that Lamborghini, I can't fit a car seat in there. <laughs> See, because he gives you what you need yeah. when you need it. Amen. See, now when I get my boys off to college <laughs> and they out there, you know, doing their thing in the world, and he might pull that Lamborghini on by and I may, may be able to sit in it for a hot second. <laughs> but really, the world we're in right now needs prayer more than ever. COVID-19, bombings, the Great Challenge. Oh yeah, I went there. I know, yeah, I know I was gonna bring up the Great Challenge. It's, 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 I need our youth to really see what's going on, what they're trying to do for the little bit of light that they can have and they can have the eternal light of God. So I just wanna leave you all with a couple of challenges. I know I love giving y'all homework. So the first challenge that I want to do is I want the older generation. Now, don't look at me crazy when I say older. I know older only means wise, and so the wiser generation. I want you all to reach out to someone in the younger generation this week. Really, I, I, I plan for you to really do it every single day. Find somebody of the younger generation and ask them two questions. The first question is, what's your name? Very simple, very simple. Now the second question is, may or may not knock their socks off. But the second question is, can I pray for you? See, in the younger generation, when they come to you, this is your charge. 
I want you to go to somebody of the older generation. And I want you to ask them the same two questions. First, what's your name? Second, may I pray for you? And the reason that I'm charging you all to do this is because the power of prayer is what we need to get through these times right now. Prayer is going to pull us out of situations that we never foresaw even coming. But we have to do it, and it's time for all the generations to come together. Younger generation, I understand. Older generation, I, I, they feel like we want to slap church guy in the throat. And that's not what we're trying to do. We just want you all to look at life from a different aspect from what you've been seeing it from. Not saying your view is wrong, but my son's view is down here, but my view is up here. Who do you think can see further? So I'm gonna leave you all with this today. Tomorrow is not promised today, but I can only promise you that yesterday is over and today is a new day. Amen. 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 Amen, amen, amen. You, you people at home, give a round of applause to Aries. Audience members, come on, round of applause. Come on now. Wake up. I can feel y'all energy at home, okay? Look, listen. <laughs> I know it's a pandemic. I know you would rather be um, in the house of the Lord, but look, the church came after you. First and foremost, you have to praise him in your home, right? In the midst of where you're most comfortable at, your, your bedroom, wherever you're at. That's where you need to praise him. All right, y'all? <laughs> amen, amen. And so, um, again, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is our Youth Sunday. I wish you all could be here. Um, it's good to be amongst uh, fellow believers. Um, we got Pastor Miss Belinda, my wife, Aaron's wife, the kids out here. It's beautiful. I, I wish y'all could see it. <laughs> but um, it's been, I think, about longer than a year since I've been in the pulpit. And uh, a lot of things have changed. I think y'all could agree. I probably gained some weight. <laughs> but um, most importantly, um, I became a father, OK? Um, so if we could, uh, right? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> if we could put a picture up of my son. As y'all can see, beautiful, handsome boy. He got my jeans, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, you know, he's young now. And you know, I always think about how my son, his name, he's named after me, his name is Junior, and um, I always wonder exactly how is he going to view me, right? Um, I want him to look at me and think like, hey, you know, my dad's a cool dad, you know, he's strong, he's confident, he's, you know, this and that, he's someone I can run to, uh, seek advice, maybe even, you know, bring his friends around, you know, um, but my wife knows um, that I'm goofy and I'm silly, right? <laughs> and so um, I'll say things like, you know, by age three, I, I really, or in the back of my head, I think I need to stop doing or acting a certain way because that's going to rub off on him. And he's not going to look at me as that cool dad, right? He's going to look at me as like a lame. <laughs> and so he won't come and tell me things possible. He might uh, hide things from me, right? But it really got me thinking because, it really got me thinking because, you know, he's just a baby, but we do that a lot. How many of you, and you can raise your hand, um, try to put pretty much like, of course, your best foot forward, impress other people, right? We try to create sort of like a, a, a reality um, or perception that we want people to have of us, right? Uh, even family members, or should I say, um, especially family, family members, like show your hands, raise your hands out there. I want y'all to participate, okay? I need y'all energy, right? But we all try to impress somebody, and if your hand isn't raised, or if you're not saying, yes, that's me, go ahead and say, God, forgive me, I lied, okay? Look, because <laughs> it's not a bad thing, like I said, um, because some of us, right, or women, y'all wearing wigs, them lashes, come on now. Them eyebrows not even yours, but you paint them on, right? <laughs> if I threw some water on you, you'd be unrecognizable, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, right? <laughs> right? Hey, but it is what it is, and men aren't excused from this either, right? Um, they out here dying their head, 
instead of shaving it off, they're hanging on to them little hairs, right? <laughs> uh, wearing two pays, what have you, right? But hey, if, if you love it, I love it, right? It's not a sin to do those things, but if they ask you, those your real eyes, and you say yes, you know, that's the sin, okay? All right, look. <laughs> but no, all jokes aside, we all, all create, though, this alter ego of who we are. We all create an identity, of course, of how we want the world to see us. And if I was to ask the audience out here or the people online, who are you? We'd probably start with, you know, our name, where we're from, what we do, because many of us attach our identity to people, places, and things. Some of us may say that we're mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, husbands, wives, right? And many of us went to college, so we got degrees after degrees, more degrees than the thermometer, right? <laughs> and so we attach our identity on what we do, our occupation. So we might be teachers, doctors, writers, construction workers, you know, um, graphic designers, electricians, police officers, or like myself, even salesmen, right? Um, and many of us may even join extracurricular activities. So we represent our fraternities, sororities, we ran track, you know, so on and forth, so forth, join the military, whatever. But what if I told you, like, all that stuff is cool, but that's not who you are. Like, that's not your identity, right? And if you don't believe me, just think about this. We went through a pandemic and we're still going through a pandemic and COVID-19 changed everything, right? Schools closed down. Uh, students started to do uh, remote learning, right? People were getting furloughed, right? Businesses closed down left and right. Some dealt with even the loss of family members and many people lost their homes, their cars, and a lot of sporting events even were canceled. And so when I saw that, you can see that depression was setting in across America and uh, maybe even other parts of the world. There were even um, news and like depression rates was going up, but that's because we were having an identity crisis, right? The things we used to do, we couldn't do anymore. The things that we said made us us, we couldn't actually do. And though some things are returning to normal, we know that the uh, COVID coronavirus numbers are going up and just, I want to ask you like, what happens if everything closes down again, right? Or let's get past the pandemic. Like, what happens if you lose your job, you become broke um, for the kids out there, your YouTube channel, uh, you can't access YouTube, internet no, right? Facebook, TikTok, your accounts get deactivated. You know, if everything just went away, who would you say you are? Just think about that for a second. Like, strip everything away. And without responding with your occupation, your marital status, your race, uh, your financial status, or anything of that sort, who are you? Right? And a lot of us would be left speechless. Um, we wouldn't know how to respond. And so I want to change that, and I believe that God wants us uh, to change that as well. So what I want you to do is go ahead and grab your Bibles. Turn with me to Ephesians 1, verses 3. 14. And while you're doing that, uh, if you don't have a Bible, that's fine. It's going to pop up on the screen. But while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and define what an identity crisis is, right? An identity crisis can be defined as a period of uncertainty and confusion in which a person's sense of identity becomes insecure, typically due to a change in their expected aims or role in society. An identity crisis will have you questioning yourself in your place in the world. Amen. And so, starting with Ephesians 1, uh, the first chapter of my Bible, verses 3 through 14, it says, and I'll be reading from the NIV verses. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us and the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace 
that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect with when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we all also chosen, we were also chosen, my apologies, have been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of our salvation. When you believed and you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Amen. 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 Okay. I don't know if y'all heard that or read that um, with me. But that's right there deserves a hand clap of praise right there. People at home, <laughs> YouTube, um, according to Ephesians 1, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. We have been chosen, adopted, redeemed, forgiven, grace lavished, unconditionally loved, and accepted. We are pure, blameless, and forgiven. We have received the hope of spending eternity with God. When we are in Christ, these aspects of our identity can never be altered by what we do or what happens from the outside, and that includes coronavirus, right? Our identity isn't in something we can accomplish our, or gain from hard work. Our identity is given by our creator, okay? If we put our faith in his word, there is no way we could ever go, go through an identity crisis, amen? amen? And so right now, I wanna take a second, if uh, we can go ahead and play a video from the youth department um, while they're doing that. We'll wait patiently. Who are you? I am victorious. Who are you? I am saved. Who are you? I am loved. Who are you? I am forgiven. Who are you? I am a new creation. Who are you? I am blessed. Who are you? I'm created in his image. Who are you? I'm never alone. Who are you? I am his friend. Who are you? I am free. Anicia, who are you? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You're more than the Instagram likes, you're more than the YouTube views, you're more than your earthly possessions, you're more than your political affiliation. Um, for the kids and teens out there, um, you're more than the basketball team, football team, you know, soccer team, whatever sports you play or instrument you play in the band, you're more than a cheerleading squad, okay? You're more than your grades and your GPA. So it's okay if you don't make the team. Uh, that's not your identity. It's okay if you didn't get the job that you applied for or uh, get into the college or the university you wanted to because that's not your identity, amen? amen. And I just wanna take a second um, to pause and say that many of you out there are maybe dealing with something that's deeper than this, right? Than these things. Um, things that you might have never shared with anyone, things that you thought you had buried in the back of your mind and that was hidden in deep, dark places. But every now and again, it rears its ugly head. It reminds you and you relive through those experiences, right? I want you to know that that pain that you felt was real or is real. Um, the abuse you might have went through is real as well. The emotional trauma that you experience is real. The things you are dealing with is real, okay? 
But I want you to know that our God is real. Yes. We serve a powerful God. And that's not your identity. Those things have real effects on your life. Yes. But right now, God doesn't identify you as that. That means that no matter what you may say about yourself, no matter what other people say about you, those bad decisions that you made, the choices you made while you were hot, the choices you might have made while you were intoxicated, that's not your identity. I don't care if there's pictures, videos, I don't care what people have said or are, are saying, all that matters is what God says. And in his word it says, you are not defined by your past. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old is passed away. All things are made new. God desires to have a more intimate relation with you. When you get closer to him, that's when you'll know your true identity. We as Christians, as believers, as people, as his people rather, have to start putting our identity in who made us and not in what he has actually made. Amen? Amen. His word never changes. His will for our lives never change. Our identity to him will never change. Our feelings may change. Our emotions change. People's feelings about us. But Jesus Christ is the same today. Yes today and forevermore and God's word endures forever amen? amen and the reason why I'm choosing to talk about identity today is because right now there's an attack on yours the devil cannot create okay his sole purpose is just to twist manipulate and go in direct opposition of what God says he's trying to redefine what God has already given order to trying to make the unnatural natural to anyone that will listen he comes to only kill, steal, and destroy. And right now, he's trying to steal, kill, and destroy your identity. He's been whispering, whispering lies to you for far too long, telling you that you're a failure, planting seeds of doubt in your life like you'll never be loved. The devil wants you to live in fear. He wants you to feel insecure. The devil wants you to even avoid church. He wants to lead you astray and ultimately wants you to doubt God. You see, the devil calls you by your sin, but God calls you by your name. And that's why I'm saying that we have to dive into his word, right? Because when the enemy tries to whisper these things or when, certain, and when our circumstances change, we can stand firm on good foundation and um, puff out our chest and boldly declare, that's not who I am. The Bible says that I am a saint and I am not a sinner. I am no longer in darkness. In fact, I am the light of the world. I have been called. I have been chosen. Through Jesus Christ, I am victorious. I have a glorious future. I am a citizen of heaven. I am a, an ambassador of Christ. And most importantly, I am set free and I am his masterpiece. Amen? Amen. And so right now, I just want to pray um, for everyone out there, um, people at home as well. I want to pray for everyone who's been holding on to an identity that is contrary to the word of God. And at first, I, at first rather, I want to extend the invitation to Christ, to anyone that hears these words and wants that to be their identity. First and foremost, once we accept Christ, God has already given it to us. We just have to claim it. We have to accept Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Jesus has already given um, you the freedom to walk into what God has already called you to be. Right? And according to Romans 10, um, 9, it says that if we confess with our mouth that the Lord or Jesus is Lord and, that, uh, and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if that's you right now and you want this to be your identity and you want a savior, I want you to go ahead and repeat after me. God, I am tired of doing things my own way. I need you more than ever. The identity that I've been trying to live is not me. Nothing works out when I try to force it, when I try to do No matter what I do, I seem always to come up short. I realize that I need a savior. So I want Jesus Christ to be my Lord. I invite you, God, into my life. I believe that you died for my sins and that you rose from the dead, Lord God. And so right now, I invite you into my life. Use me, Lord. Renew me, Lord. 
Be my God. Be my Savior, Lord God. Have your way in my life. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands right now. You may not know it right now. Somebody right now, life is changing right now. Their identity is no longer in what they try to do, what they try to become, what other people have said over your life. Their identity is the one who created them because we were made in the image of God. So we have to, have to start putting our faith, our identity in God's word. Amen. 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 I just want to thank you all um, for attending right now. Thank you, Harris, um, Pastor, Ms. Belinda, everyone at home. Thank you all. Right now, we're going to go ahead and end it with our youth. We have a, a closing prayer uh, provided by our youth. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Minister Xavier, for the word that was put out. And everybody else, make sure you share the word so it will so others can be blessed. And if there is nothing else, let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for everything that you've done for us these years. We honor you, lift you up, glorify you, and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You made a way. Thanks, Minister Xavier, for the word that was put out. And everybody else, make sure you share the word so it will so others can be blessed. And if there is nothing else, let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for everything that you've done for us these years. We honor you, lift you up, glorify you, and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh